We're so glad to be here again. God has allowed us to stand before you again to speak a word, to teach, to preach. And we're just so grateful to be able to do that. We want to say thank you again for your giving, for your, for your patience. Thank you for your steadfastness. <clears throat> I want to remind you again that on the end of this message, we're going to uh, do communion and so I want you to go ahead and whatever you have at home that you're going to, we're going to pray over it and bless it and sanctify it. So if you have juice and crackers at home, I want you to go ahead and have those ready. So when at the end of this, uh, this message, <clears throat> you will be ready to join in with us in partaking of the Lord's Supper. Once again, I want to thank you for listening. Those of you who are sharing DVDs and videos and on YouTube and so on and so forth. Uh, thank you for getting the word out. Thank you for being an instrument to where you are a blessing to others. Um, we just praise God for you. We pray that you would continue uh, to prosper and be in health, even as your soul prosper, that you would have good health. You're going to see that on <clears throat> Wednesday, We'll be talking a little bit more about that, about guarding your health, because we want you to stay healthy. We want you to have longevity so that you can continue to work in the kingdom of God. God bless you. Thank you so much. Today, I want to talk to you about the anointing. And I want you to tell yourself or tell somebody around you, I am anointed. Just say, I am anointed. I am anointed. Tell them, thank God for the anointing. Over in... Psalms 23rd chapter, somewhere around verse 5, 6. We finished last week on, on, on the scripture, on the verse that says, Thou prepare the table before me in the presence of my enemies. And then he goes on to say, You anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Today I want to talk to you about the anointing. You anointed my head with oil. David said you anointed my head with oil. The Amplified says you anointed my head with oil. My brimming cup runs over. Anointing with oil or the pouring of oil on a person's head was a common practice in biblical times. When a guest came into a home, would come into a home, he was anointed or she was anointed as an act of hospitality, honor and esteem, and partly to moisten the skin after the visitor's body had been exposed to the hot and dry climate to protect it from excessive perspiration. When mixed with perfume, the oil, or should I say the oil, imparted a delightfully refreshing and invigorating sensation. Back in the day, athletes anointed their bodies as a matter of course before running a race. Isn't that something? Therefore, anointing their bodies with oil was refreshing, invigorating, and made them better fit for action. Anointing was also a distinct religious rite among the Jewish people. In the Jewish customs, a person was sometimes anointed to set him apart, set apart means sanctify, for a particular work or service. If you read in the Bible, you will see where Saul was anointed when Israel demanded a king. You'll find that in Samuel chapter 8, verse 4 through 22 in chapter 10, verse 1. We also see in the Bible well, where Samuel anointed David as king, 1 Samuel 16, 1 through 13. And Solomon was also anointed as David's successor. You'll find that in 1 Kings chapter 1, verse 39. During an anointing, when a person was being anointed, the person customarily knelt while the oil was poured over their head. These kings called anointed ones were anointed by prophets acting on God's behalf. 
So you have to understand that the kings, these were godly kings. They were anointed by godly prophets. And the oil, they knelt down and the oil was poured over their heads. And they were anointed and as acting on God's behalf. All right. So and, and I just want to just want to say this. People who are in leadership positions, presidents, kings and so on and so forth. They are supposed to be acting on God's behalf uh, to take care of the people. Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed commission one. And when we talk about Jesus being the anointed commission one, Jesus Christ, the anointed one, we want you to view in your mind, picture in your mind, capital A, capital O, anointed one. All right. And, and, and we as followers of Christ are the anointed one, small a, small o. So Jesus is the anointed one. And so today I stop by to tell the believers, the sheep of the almighty shepherd, that you have been anointed by the great shepherd to a place of honor and esteem. I need you to understand that. He has refreshed and invigorated you. God is your spiritual moisturizer in a hot and dry climate. He's our spiritual moisturizer in this atmosphere, in this environment. Notice David said, he anointed my head with oil. He anointed my head. Headship means a place of authority. Headship means a place of leadership and influence. Just like the kings of old, we the anointed ones are his representatives in this earth. God has anointed us. Guess what? Guess what God has done? God has anointed us to, 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 to serve. God, God has anointed us to be salt and light. God has anointed, anointed us to be witnesses mouthpieces doing what declaring God's protection declaring God's deliverance declaring God's healing to a lost and dying world so we must understand like David said thou anointed my hair with oil God 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 anoint he anoints us and not just to feel good not just to go through theatrics not just to give him uh, glory and praise, but God has anointed us. He's anointed us in a place of authority, in a place of influence, so that we can do service, so that we can work in the kingdom, so that we can be influencers, so that we can be sought in this earth, so that we can be light in this earth, so that we can represent him. Isn't that something? So, so you have to understand that even after sin, see, you know, it, it's, it's good to sit at the table in the presence of your enemies and receive all that good provision and being fed and so on and so forth. But that's not the end of it. God wants us to get up after he has blessed us, after he has fed us, after he has taken care of our needs. He wants us to get up and kneel down and, 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 and submit ourselves to the anointed oil that he's going to pour on us because now it's time for us to get up and serve. We've been blessed by God. We've been healed by God. We've been delivered by God. Our health is in pretty good shape. God says, I want you to get up and now serve. I want you to be a blessing. I want the anointed one that's on the inside of you to anoint you so that you can be anointed. And so now that God will use you in helping somebody else get delivered, helping somebody else get fed, helping somebody else understand that God is my all in all. I, you see, you have to understand this, that God anoints us to serve. God anoints us. See, see, people don't understand about the anointing. The anointing and the Holy Spirit is two different things. You can have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you and not be anointed. But you can't have the anointing and not have the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is the presence of God on the inside of you. But the anointing is the unction and the power that flows through an individual to bring about change, to bring about deliverance, to bring about peace, to bring about, oh my God, whoo, 
to bring about change. And so we must understand that David knew what he's talking about. He says, thou knowing in my hair with all my cup runneth over. He says, my brim, the, the, the amplifier says, my brim cup runs over. See, the true, I, I need you to listen to this. The true manifestation of the anointing is the fact that it produces overflow. People tell me, I'm anointed, I'm anointed. Yeah, yeah, you're anointed, what are you producing? You're anointed, where are the fruits? You anointed, you anointed to do what? Sit down? You're not anointed because God doesn't anoint you to sit down. The, the proof in the pudding, the true manifestation of the anointing is the fact that it produces overflow. Overflow means runoff. Overflow means extra. It means surplus, excess, spill over, flood. So, so you have to understand that overflow, when he's talking about my cup running over, he's saying that you are so anointed that there's so much change going on. I mean, there's so much power that's going on through you by way of the Holy Ghost that it spills over into somebody else's life. See, it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. It's the anointing, it's the anointing that, that destroy, um, it destroys the yoke and it undo heavy burdens. It's the anointing. I need, I need, I just, it, has anybody experienced being able to do something and you know that wasn't you? You said something spiritual or you helped somebody and you, you know that wasn't you. And you're correct. It was the anointing. You ever laid hands on somebody and they got healed? That wasn't you. It was the anointing. <laughs> you, 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 you ever uh, spoke to an individual and gave them wisdom and sound discretion and sound wisdom and a sound word? And, and you're like, you know, that was good for me. I, didn't, I, didn't, I don't know where that came from. It came from the, the anointing. It, matter of fact, you got blessed from the fallout. When you, were, when you were talking to them and being a blessing to them, that same word that God gave you that anointed and broke yokes in their life and helped them to see and gave them clarity did the same thing for your life. And so I need you to understand that the, manifest, the true manifestation of the anointing is what it produces, and it always produces overflow. That's why he said, anointed my head with all my cup runneth over. Now, please allow me to answer a question that many believers ask. Many believers, they ask this question. How do I know what my giftings are for the body of Christ? How do I know? You know, I, I, you, Pastor, you know, I, I, I know, I, I believe, I believe I could do this and I believe we can do that. And I believe God is using me to do such and such and such. And God told me so and so and so. And you know, I had a dream and, and in that dream I saw God and God was showing this. And in the dream this happened and such and such. And I had somebody to tell me that, that, that God's going to do this through you and I see God doing such and such and such. And so the question is, how do I know? How do I know? How do I know what my giftings are for the body of Christ? Can I give you an answer? The answer is this, you will know that a particular talent or skill is your gifting to the kingdom of God when it produces fruit. When what you do in your life produces results, causes growth, yields a good harvest, somebody said good harvest, and help others change for the better. Somebody say help others change for the better. Your naughty cups run over when what you do is a blessing to the kingdom of God, is a blessing to somebody who's down, is a blessing to somebody that straddle the fence and don't know which way to go, is a blessing and causes them to want God, to cause some, oh my God, that calls them to hunger and thirst after righteousness. When what you do 
causes others to say, I want to see that God. I want to feel that God. I want to experience what you experience with that God. Then you know that that's your gifting. Whatever in simple form, whatever it is that you do, that's a blessing to everybody. Those that are in the kingdom and those that don't even know Christ. It's a blessing to them. It causes them to change. Then that's your gifting. And so you have to understand. See, a lot of us, a lot of us ask that question because there's certain things we don't want to do. <laughs> I, I don't want to do that. That ain't my gift. I don't want to do that because it, it's not out front. You know, it takes a little work, takes a little sacrifice. So, so, so you don't want to do that. But you have to understand, it's been my experience, that it's been the small things. It's been the little things. It's been the things that nobody else want to do. That God gets in and he'll anoint you and change lives. You remember people doing things for you behind the, behind the scene, behind closed doors that was just a blessing? You didn't have enough money. You didn't have the wherewithal. You didn't have enough education and knowledge. You didn't have enough experience. But the favor of God and the anointing of God on your life opened doors for you. In God something. And so you have to understand that the way that you recognize your gifting for the body of Christ is that whatever you do, when whatever you do is a blessing to others, then that's your area of, gift, of, 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 of giftings. Notice verse 6 says this. It says, surely, here again we're in the Amplified. It says, surely or only with conviction and confidence, goodness, mercy, and unfailing love shall follow me all the days of my life. Whew, look at this. I anointed my head with oil. I'm in a place of authority and leadership and influence. My cup runneth over. You bless me so much, not for myself, but for somebody else. My cup overflows. I got so much stuff, my, the brim of my cup is just, it, what you bless me with and bless me to have is running over into my saucer. And, and, and from the saucer, it's dripping down to others. I, I, and so the, the, David goes on to say, he says, not only do you anoint my head with oil and my cup running over, there's something that follows this. There's something that he's going to do for us personally. He says, surely uh, the, 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 the personal results from your overflow is this. See, there's a result from overflow. And I'm so glad that after God uses me and use you, to be a blessing to somebody else and somebody else change, he comes back and blesses us personally for being a blessing. Isn't that something? God blesses you for being a blessing. So, so, so you, you, oh my God. He pours his anointing, he saves us. He pours his anointing on our life. He causes us to be an influence and a blessing and salt and light. And because we serve and obey him and do what he asks us to do, do what he causes us to do, do what he purposes us to do, because the gift that we have, the gift that we have in us coming from him in the first place. So he sanctifies it. He anoints that gift and calls us to work and be, be service in the kingdom of God. And because we have enough sense and enough faith, Helped through him, we have the faith in the sense because he helped us to have the faith. He helped us to have the sense. We'll go ahead and be obedient. We go ahead and we're obedient to what he tells us to do. And after we do all of that, he turns around and blesses us. The way he says, thank you, servant. Thank you, believer. Thank you, saint. Thank you, child, as he turns around and he blesses us. Isn't that something? Who wouldn't want to serve a God like that? Who wouldn't want to serve a God that gives you food Tells you to eat the food, gives you benefits from eating the food. When you obey what he tells you to do, he turns around and bless you so you can have some more and more to give out. And here's the thing. you got to understand, you can't outgive God. You can't do more for God than he can do for you. See, that, see you got to understand something. When God uses you to feed somebody, when God uses you 
and when he anoints you to, to, to make a difference in somebody's life, you have to understand that when he anoints you to make a difference, when he anoints you to make a difference, he's going to turn around and bless you to continue. Do you, know, do you not know that God wants, God loves for good things to continue? Don't you know he loves for blessings to continue to flow? He's not a, it, it's not a one-time thing. That's why I like blessings rather than miracles. Miracles are here and there, every now and then. Blessings are every day. <laughs> blessings are or time and time and time again. Blessings come in over. Blessings come when you're not expecting, when you least expecting God to do what he does. They just come. They just, they just come. I wasn't thinking about it. I was just happy being in the Lord. Happy serving God. Happy obeying God. Happy experiencing the word of God. Happy experiencing truth. Just going on about my way. Just enjoy the kingdom, the peace of God. Hallelujah. And all of a sudden, a blessing comes and hit. That's how God works. That, 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 that's what it means when it says my, my, my cup overflows. But then he goes on, he says, surely goodness and mercy. The personal results from your overflow is this. Goodness, mercy, and dependable love shall or will follow me. Can I say it this way? We have twin angels. One named goodness and the other named mercy. Somebody walk with me. I, I, I need you to walk with me. Goodness empowers us. This is the job of goodness. Goodness empowers us to display kindness, honesty. Goodness empowers us to have integrity. Goodness empowers us to live righteous. Goodness empowers us to walk and live and have a godly character. But now here come the twin angel, his twin, mercy. This is what mercy does. Mercy encourages us to get back up when we fall into sin. Mercy intercedes on our behalf. I wish I had somebody. Mercy puts us back in fellowship with our Father. Mercy restores the joy of our salvation. Mercy applies to us the redemption plan. Mercy, according to Job 2.25, the Amplified, mercy will restore or replace for you the years that the locust has eaten. The hopper locust, the stripping locust, my God, the crawling locust, my, woo -woo, that's what mercy does. Everything that we fell in, we're not done. Every time we fall, you can fall seven times, but you're going to get back up because of mercy. Mercy says, I'm not finished. God, not finished. Mercy says, you have not fulfilled your destiny or your purpose. Mercy said, get back up. Dust your feet off. Repent. Do a 180. Mercy says, you may fall, but I got you. Thank God for goodness and mercy. Whew. Whew. Hallelujah. I want you to understand that goodness leads and guides me. I need goodness in my life because I need the leading of the Holy Ghost. I need his anointing to break yokes as I go, and I need his anointing to, to enlighten me. I, I, I need to be led, and I need guidance, and I need direction. I, I need wisdom and discretion, common sense. So that's what goodness does for me. But then mercy goes along and covers my back. So I got goodness in front of me, leading me, and I have mercy behind me, covering my back. So this is what happened. When, I, when, 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 when I'm not walking like I need to walk, mercy is back there to clean up them tracks so the devil won't come and say, aha, aha, I know you ain't saved. Aha, you messed up. Aha, you said the wrong thing. Aha, 
you ain't going to reel back. You ain't going to come back from that. Uh -huh, I got you now. Mercy said, not so, because Jesus has forgiven us and his blood has cleansed us from all unrighteousness. He took it back 2,000 years ago on the cross when he died for my sins, when he died for your sins. He died for sin that I did in the past. He died for present sin, and he died for future sin. So goodness and mercy got my back. You need goodness and mercy. You better get you some. You better make sure goodness. And, but I love the Bible says goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. How long? How long will goodness be with you? How long will mercy be with you? He says, all the days of my life. What does that mean? The Amplified says, and through the length of my days. So they're going to be with me as long as I'm in this earthly body. Hallelujah. And then he says, not only will goodness and mercy be with me all the days of my life. He says, the house of the Lord. And his presence shall be my dwelling place. I'm going to always be in the house of the Lord. What does that mean? You don't have to, you don't have to confine God to, one, to a building or a location. Because God is everywhere. And he's big. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And they that dwell therein. So wherever I go is the house of the Lord. Why? Because wherever I go, his presence is there. Hallelujah. Thou anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, can I make it, can I say it this way? God has anointed your head with oil. Your cup, if you're walking in righteousness and trying to do right, your cup runneth over. Surely, it is a certain, it is a fact, it will happen. Goodness and mercy shall follow you, twin angels, all the days of your life. And you're going to be able to walk in the presence of God. God won't leave you. He won't forsake you. God is. The Lord is my shepherd. I hope that these teachings on the 23rd Psalm has been a blessing to you. I hope that you've been enlightened. I hope that you will be able to go back and listen and that God will plant a rhema word. Not just a seed, but he would plant something in you through his anointing that you may catch a hole and catch fire and allow him to use you for his glory. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you, Lord God, for writing our word. We thank you for your power. <clears throat> thank you for your anointing. Thank you, Lord God, that we are your righteousness in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, that we are, you are our shepherd, and we are the sheep of your pastor. God, thank you for allowing us to lie down in green pastures and restoring our soul. And we just thank you for all the benefits that you have given us and that you promised us. And Father, in these times, we yield ourselves to you so that you may do with us whatever you will. Father, we thank you for your son dying on the cross. Thank you for your shed blood. Thank you, Lord God, for that sin in Jesus to be the ultimate sacrifice. Because without the shedding of blood, there would be no remission of sin. And so, God, we thank you for the blood that was shed back on Calvary. And, Lord, we just ask that you would Help us to hold on, to hang on in there, to trust you in all things. 
And now, Lord God, as we get ready to honor you and to remember you through this sacrament of the Lord's Supper, I pray that whatever we're using, the crackers and juice, to symbolize this, that right now you would sanctify it and set it apart. We set the crackers and the juice apart to symbolize this great sacrament of communion. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that we are the righteousness in Christ Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that as we stand before you, that we come repentant, come thanking you for forgiving us for our sins, for saving us, for putting us in right fellowship with you. Father, we acknowledge that as often as we do this, we show your death until you come back. And so, Father, I ask you that as we take of this bread and drink of this juice, that those that need healing in their bodies, those that need deliverance in their minds, those that need a free spirit to serve and to commune with you, that you would do an operation, a spiritual operation during this sacrament. Father, we just praise you. Thank you, Lord God, for those that are listening, those that are able to participate. Now may your spirit fill the room, fill that house, wherever they might be. Somebody might even be at work, might be traveling. Pray that they will pull aside the road partake of this great blessing. Lord, do what only you can do. And we just praise you for it. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs>